Meet Tony Ganji from Beverly. He really gets a hoot from anything that toots. Big barrels to turning tunes. A master of never have I ever. Have you eaten a razor blade before? No, I've never eaten a razor blade, but I've swallowed a sword. <laughs> but we're not here for that. We'll have him tell you why we are here. When I run into people that, you know, I tell them I'm an organ grinder, they, they want to know what it sounds like. They want to know what it's all about. The organ grinder came to popularity in the United States in the late 1800s, including in Boston's Old Back Bay. The Italian-American immigrants, they would come here, they would get an organ, they would get a monkey, and that would feed their families. But that trade, the craft, and the sounds of the carnival would eventually fade into obscurity. Around 1936, they became banned in New York. Mayor Fiorello LaGuardia at the time, first he wanted to stop street performing altogether. He felt like it was panhandling. The other story I've heard is that being an Italian-American himself, he didn't like the stereotype. Now, unfortunately, at the time, all the organs and all the music were made in New York. So once the ban happened, that all dried up. The mayor may have said no to monkey business, but Tony says he's always had a fascination with the job. So in the early 2000s, while his wife was pregnant with their first child, Tony was cooking up his own family edition. I was able to find a gentleman by the name of Alan Pell who was building these small organs, 20 notes, and I ordered one from him. And about six months later, I had my son and my organ. <laughs> <laughs> Which one did you coddle more? <laughs> my son, that's the diplomatic answer. <laughs> There are some similarities to the organs of yore. Did some beautiful inlay woodwork on it. The handle engine. But Tony's organ is a bit more high tech. It plays pretty much anything. Within 20 notes. 20 notes. That's what Ellie would have comes okay, down Aerosmith, to. Aerosmith, anything like uh, that. I've got some odd stuff. Allowing for an interesting playlist. Fun for Name That Tune. Anyone? This is like an old TV it's show, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Da, da, Beatles! Yeah, there you go. You could say Tony is organ obsessed. He even makes his own on a 3D printer. So it's easy to understand why one grinder wasn't enough. So this is the big boy, if you will. Yeah. Okay. This is 31 notes. You want to give it a try? Yes. And of course, no organ grinder position would be complete without the hat. There you go. How about that performance? A fan of one. Thanks, Cornelius. Where would we be without the monkey that came along with the grinder, right? That's right. Monkeys would be given a tin cup and they would go throughout the crowd and collect the money. Tony sticks to the mechanical kind. After all, when your job is to roll into performances from street fairs to small cafes, there can only be one star, the organ. To see the looks on people's faces, I've had so many people come up to me and say, I have never seen anything like this in my life. I've only heard about them. So yeah, it really is wonderful. In the uh, tradition, I did not know this, of the organ grinder has a really long history, apparently starting in Egypt several centuries ago. Yeah, well, back in the 80s and 90s, many people in the Boston area may remember the popular organ street grinder performers, Hurdy Gurdy, Monkey and Me. They performed for many years, Tony and Coco, until the city banned live animal performances. Mm.